Hey everyone, Dan here. I want to talk to you about how critiques can be kind of a bad thing. When we're in art school, or if you take a painting class, a lot of times at the end of a painting class, all the students will put up all the paintings and everyone will go around and criticize them and say what they like or don't like. Usually what they don't like more so than that. And this can be very damaging to the art spirit because especially when you're newly painting you you're not maybe necessarily have complete control of the paint and the brushes yet so it, to go in and have someone tell you about 15 things that are wrong with your painting and you're just there trying to have fun can damage your art spirit and of course you don't want to do anything like that so you have to really guard your art motivation and try not to let anybody bring you down and the main problem with art critiques is they presuppose that there is some sort of a universal truth in art. Like there is some sort of a universal way of believing that one painting is better than another. Like look at this beautiful Bogoro. But look at Alice Neal, how different she is, but still a great master. And Vincent van Gogh, we... Imagine if he had been through some art critiques, what damage that could have done. And Rembrandt, Jackson Pollock, Elizabeth Sparhawk Jones. So how do we deal with this? I mean, first and foremost, I would say no to all group critiques because unless it's really an unusual group and they're very, everyone is sort of very much on the same plane, if you will. All right, because otherwise, you know, if you're in a normal, ever notice that if you put up your painting in a group critique, most people get kind of a sick feeling in their stomach for fear of what's coming next. And there's always one or two people that want to just sell their ideas on everyone and try to say, well, my way's better because it's like saying poodles are better than Great Danes or collies are better than St. Bernard's. They're all just dogs. I mean, everyone has their personal opinion, and that's wonderful, but it is your idea that you need to protect and nurture of what your art is. So, how is it that you are supposed to about, go about getting a critique, then, if, you, if you're in, a, in this kind of a situation? Well, let's talk about that. So, if you're going to ask for a critique, what you need to do is let the first and foremost, you let, have to let the critiquer know what you're trying to get out of the critique. I mean, I want say I want to learn how to paint like Rembrandt. I want to learn how to paint like Richard Schmidt or David LaFell or other great contemporaries we have. And you, then from there, we've got something we can judge on, right? So ask in terms of color, value, edges, drawing, is do I have the same color harmony that, that um, I see here in this Rembrandt or in this Twachman, and how are my edges holding up compared to like Richard Schmidt or these other great painters of our time, David LaFell, what's the value structure look like? And don't use this time to fish for compliments, really. This is a time for you to really find out something, inform some, something important about your paintings. Then as the reviewer, how do we deal with that? Well, as a reviewer, you need to consider what are the goals and the style of this particular artist? Where are they trying to go? And answer only in those terms if you can. And examine your own personal motivation in giving this advice. Are you trying to show the this other painter how clever you are? Or do you really want this person to get better? If, you, if it isn't that you just really want them to get better, then please don't give a critique. Pay attention to your tone. And only respond to their specific questions. Don't say, well, yeah, this is what I think here, but I don't like this. Yeah. Unless they're asking you about that, don't ask about it. And phrase your critique in such a way that it will only motivate and encourage the painter to paint more paintings. Really, because that's really what it is all about. So you really have to guard your art motivation and be careful not to let anybody undermine it. It really is important. So find a small group or a teacher or someone who will help you get to where you want to rather than just willy-nilly telling you things that people think are right or wrong about your paintings because you're probably better than you think they are. This is Dan Edmus with the Tip of the Week. Have a fantastic day.